Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Driving Mall Show. What's happening in the Heartland Championship? Yes, that's what we're going to be talking about because the Heartland Championship is one of the most beloved uh, and oldest uh, rugby competitions here in New Zealand. Um, but um, they, we, we all thought it had been cancelled and yet we are seeing shows, um, seeing games going out there. Um, happy to be joined today by Kevin from rugbyheartland.co.nz to have a chat about this. How are you doing, sir? Good morning, uh, Paul. Great to see you. The um, So New Zealand Rugby um, announced that all rep rugby beneath the Mighty 10 Cup and the Farrah Palmer Cup was going to be cancelled this year due to um, due to COVID, uh, essentially. Uh, and so we thought that basically that meant that the Heartland, the, um, the Heartland Championship wouldn't be uh, taking place uh, as, as it's below the Mighty 10 Cup. Um, and yet we see clubs... Um, Oh, you see, sorry, provinces naming their side. So is the, is the Heartland Championship happening this year? Uh, in a word, no, it's not. Um, the Heartland uh, unions all got together when COVID broke out and decided that, um, you know, for the benefit of all, um, they and not knowing where, you know, lockdowns and that were going to go, they were going to um, cancel the or postpone the Heartland Championship for 2020 until next year. Um, and then um, a few of the teams were thinking, well, it's not getting too bad actually out there, but they had already put in place that the championship had been uh, postponed and um, and pretty much they'll just replay the championship in 2021. Um, but of course, you know, the union still wanted to sort of give their um, supporters and uh, club players something to, you know, aim for after the end of the club season. So, um, all the unions bar Thames Valley and West Coast have organised sort of local derby matches between themselves and the, in, within the North Island and the South Island. So uh, we do have um, on average about four or five games per province that are being played um, in, a, in a friendly but first class atmosphere. OK. And just so people understand as to as to the, the, the provinces we're talking about, let's bring up the table from last year. So. Um, as you can see, yeah, Thames Valley at the top there, which we've already mentioned, saying that they're not actually organising games. And East Coast at the bottom there, the other team that you said aren't. But in between there, we've got North Otago uh, from the South uh, uh, South Island, um, West Coast. Um, oh, hang on, I'm trying, I'm trying to get the South Island ones. Um, North Otago, South Canterbury uh, and Mid Canterbury are all from the South Island. And then from the North Island, you've got the Wairapa Bush, uh, Wanganui, uh, West Coast, uh, Buller's North, North Island, Buller, Buller yeah, Hobbity Island. Bay, and uh, Hori Fenewa, uh, Kapiti, and then obviously um, King Country, or which um, or known, known known as Meads Meads Country to some people. Um, obviously, where Colin Meads uh, is, uh, is 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 from. So, yeah, um, especially three. You've basically got three. Is that, is that right? So three provinces in the South Island um, that are playing no. games plus the East Coast. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got your coasters around the wrong way. So it was West, right. West oh. Coast and Thames Valley that um, aren't playing any games. Oh, sorry. Um, so we've got, we've got the uh, four teams in the South Island. So we've got Buller, Mid Canterbury, South Canterbury and North Otago. Um, they're, they're having matches. Um, Buller are playing, um, well, they've just recently played Mid Canterbury, but they've got coming up a home and away uh, in Timaru and Westport against South Canterbury. But um, Mid Canterbury and South Canterbury and North Otago are playing for their annual Hannon Shield, but they've also uh, tagged on a um, a challenge trophy for you know the COVID time. So it's called the uh, Placemakers Challenge uh, Shield. So um, IE will go through some of the results that have just uh, happened over the past weekend. But um, you know they've got something to play for, and then in the North Island. Um, East Coast uh, have um, several games and, and everyone else except for Thames Valley. So, um, yeah, uh, th th there's plenty to play for and um, and the, the annual trophies are still being played for. The only annual trophy that's not being played for is the traditional Rundle Cup between Buller and West Coast. And that is the first time since 1918 uh, West Coast and Buller have not had a match. They played right throughout uh, World War II. And, um, you know, they've played 230 odd times. There's only a three, you know, I think it's 105 to 103 uh, wins to uh, West Coast. 
and 15 draws and less than a point over 100 years of uh, battles. So um, there was going to be two matches, but uh, unfortunately with COVID and the, the length of the season, it hasn't worked out well with the farmers, with uh, caffeine and all that sort of stuff. So they've unfortunately had to put a, a, a stop to uh, that particular rivalry for this year. And I guess that's one of the points here to, to, to things to point out here, isn't it? That this that the um the 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 Heartland Championship is an amateur or at least semi-amateur competition. Clearly, they don't unlike myself, if I if I go play for a club, I'm obviously pay my fees and pay my pay my own travel expenses. These guys will get the sort of travel expenses, won't have to pay entrance fees. But um but essentially the players are all amateur, they're not paid to play, are they? No, well you, you could argue it's a semi-professional. Um they they are they are given um, allowances you know during the Heartland season to play, um, but at the end of the day when they get home, say if Thames Valley travelled down to Greymouth for a game, uh, they would travel on the the Thursday or the Friday. They're away from their uh, you know work. They have to take a couple of days off work. Um, they then have a couple of days to travel back, and then um, they still have to go to work on Monday or Tuesday morning, and then uh, get to training on Wednesday nights. Whereas, of course, with the Mitre 10 Cup and uh, Farah Palmer, they're, they're more fully professional and they can just keep going to work, i.e. training, six days a week before game day. So, yeah, so these guys uh, do sacrifice a lot. But um, at the end of the day, no Heartland, no All Blacks. The, um, and so, yeah, so that's, so, yeah, so okay, when you talk about that, the moving of the season, because um, it has moved back, hasn't it? It's been delayed because of the COVID, it's later in the year. So it'll be yeah, warmer pictures, uh, well, yeah, warmer, warmer training, better pictures. But the flip side of that is that for seasonal workers, such as farmers, um, and especially in a lot of these uh, provinces, are rural provinces with a lot of, with a large farming community. Clearly that's, as you say, calving um, and other things like that can get in the, will, will, will have got in the way this year, um, which is uh, which, which is really un, uh, un, un unfortunate. Um, so it looks like the South Island got themselves in kind of nicely organised in a mini competition. Uh, is the has the North Island sort of split itself in two, or or, or uh, and have two little mini competitions, or, or is it totally random as to who's playing who? Um, no, no, um, it's pretty much a a uh, traditional um, comp, like what you would see in a pre-season format. So um, in the Central North Island here, we've got um, Wairarapa Bush, Horafanua Kapiti. Uh, Wanganui, they they're playing. They normally play for a trophy called the Bruce Steele Cup, and so they're all having a uh, home and away series with that, uh, starting um, actually this weekend. Um, it's not for the Bruce Steele Cup, I believe. It's um, for a trophy between Horafanua and Wairarapa Bush called the uh, PGG Wrightson Cup, and that game was actually postponed from about two weeks ago uh, due to COVID lockdown. And um, so that now kicks off this weekend. It was meant to be played in Otaki, but uh, they have had to move the game due to level two uh, back to Lavinda, Maine on Saturday afternoon at 2.30. So, um, for example, Wairapa Bush, they, they play Hora Whanua. Um, and then um, they've got, uh, in between that, they've got, um, before they play Wanganui again, they're playing King Country uh, in a... Um, for a new trophy, uh, they're calling the Lahore Meads Scroll, and that's going to be played in Marston. And then um, we'll, I might as well just stick with Wairapa Bush because it's easier to remember it all. Um, and then Wairapa Bush then um, will go to Wanganui and have a game in Cook's Gar uh, No, sorry, uh, Horafanua then come over to Marston and have another game for the Bruce Steel Cup. And then um, Wairapa Bush travel to Cook's Gardens in October to play um, Wanganui for the, of course, the Bruce Steel Cup. So it's it's like a Ranfurly Shield type thing. Uh, you win it, you keep it, and you put it on the line for the next game. Um, and then Horafanua, they've got um, the same games again. I'm not too sure, 100% sure exactly what their full uh, draw is at this stage. I know they've got uh, Wanganui, Wairapa, and I believe Poverty Bay. Um, and then you've got Wanganui. Um, They've got several so, games all li lined up as well. So, so basically, so yes, yeah, so we've got many, that mini tournament down in the South Island. We've got a mini tournament up in um, in the mid North Island with a few extra games um, added in there as well. Uh, yeah. And um, so that's uh, uh, and then I guess and then I guess Poverty Bay uh, and the other teams out that way have got have got another little mini tournament going as well. 
yes, uh, East Coast and Poverty Bay will play this weekend uh, mm -hmm. in the first of a home and away uh, series. Um, they've been playing against each other since 1923, and they're only up the road, and it's a bit easier to keep uh, the crowds in, in some sort of check up that way. Um, East Coast have had a uh, non-first class warm-up last weekend. They, they will play Poverty Bay uh, in two games home and away. And then for the first time since 1975, though, uh, they end their, um, well, sorry, they got King Country. Again, King Country, uh, you know, uh, all over the place. And then um, to round off their season, they've got a non-first class game, but it's an important game. The Tanafa of Northland uh, sending a development team to uh, Ruatoria, uh, sorry, to Rangatukia uh, on the East Coast to play um, the Nadi Pro. And now that's the first time since 1975 the, the Sky Blues will play the Sky Blues. Uh, the Tanafa are going to the Moanga, as they would say. Uh, so that's a game that will be uh, highly anticipated by all. Um, it's not often you get a might of 10 province travelling to a Heartland uh, province for a game. So that, that's quite exciting. Um, but I'll just also just want to throw in there, Thames Valley, I did say they weren't going to have any games, but they've announced a under-23 squad, um, and they're calling themselves the Thames Valley Thunder. And now they are going to be having a round robin with Bay of Plenty, Counties, Taranaki, and uh, Waikato. So um, the the silver lining to all of this is that because um, the provinces have to use local players during this COVID period, they can't bring in loan players or players from outside the region like they're allowed to and um, under the rules. So what it's actually doing now, as an example, Buller last weekend played eight new deputants, all from club rugby, all from Westport. So that's actually going to build up the player base in those local areas. And hopefully moving forward, they won't be so reliant on bringing in three lone players and a player of origin who might have moved to Auckland and can go back down to Westport and play sort of attitude. Right. Um, the And... Uh, Obviously, normally you can see some of these games there just sort of roundups on Sky TV when it, when we have the Heartland Championship in its full thing, uh, it, uh, it, its full form. Sorry, uh, this year, how can people actually watch these games? I mean, are they going to be? Uh, is is Sky getting involved? Because this this book, this is something that's been organised by the provinces themselves, not by New Zealand Rugby. New Zealand Rugby hasn't been in, is, uh, is is not in, not involved with this organisation. So organising this. So uh, how, how can people watch the games? Okay, well, most of them are doing some type of live stream via social media, but um, there is, I've already noticed, a, um, a delayed coverage on uh, Sky and Prime TV. So I'll give a shout out to uh, my good friends at uh, Grassroots Rugby. Um, they um, have put together a what they're calling Main Freight Local Rugby, and that's going to be on Sky and on Prime, um, in the, on Freeview Prime TV and they'll be like a week later so uh the games that were played last weekend will be um on on air this weekend uh well this week and um the games they had last week were the games from the previous week so they had for example um last weekend on prime tv um they had a mid canterbury south canterbury match from um i think that was being played up in Hamner springs um and they had uh north otago playing otago country so um, those games are being filmed, and I do know that um, the games that have just been played in the previous weekend will also be on um, Sky TV and Free to Air Prime TV during the during the next four or five weeks. And there of course, on, on social media. There, there, there was me trying to uh, try, try, trying to lead you into plugging your own uh, your own Facebook page, folks. If you go oh. over to <laughs> Rugby. Um, uh, go, go to Heartland Championship for slash or um, NPC or search for Rugby Heartland. Um, you'll get uh, Kevin's um, uh, Facebook page, which is the which which covers all this Rugby Heartland um, and NPC coverage. Uh, and he'll be sharing. Uh, he, he shares a lot of the streams um, on there. He also um, gets involved in in actually streaming some of the things and putting things on there as well. So if you want to catch any of those games live rather than a week delayed, um, then check out his uh, his Facebook page. That's the best place. Pulling it, pulling together all these, what is it, sixteen? I oh, know, um, twelve or whatever it is uh, provinces. Um, there's, a, there's, there's clip, rather than sort of searching around all of those individually, you can go to his page and it, it's, it's all uh, it, it's, it's all summarised for you there. 
Um, I'll just like to just point out as well. Yes, the Heartland Championship isn't on, but he says, um, <laughs> I, I live, breathe Heartland rugby. So, um, and I've had the okay from the um, from the developers for this particular um, segue I'm doing right now. And as you said, I might as well do a shameless plug for what I do do. But um, the Heartland Championship is still go actually going, um, but in a virtual sense. So um, what we've done is uh, we've loaded up all your favourite team's uh, jerseys. Uh, we've loaded up the, the grounds to make them look like Heartland grounds. And we run every weekend a full round of what would have been the uh, this weekend's matches uh, from the postponed championship in a virtual world. So uh, between 12 and 6 o'clock normally on a Saturday, and you can watch the replays after that, of course, but we run live um, actual games of the of the matches. Now, people might go, oh, it's just a computer game, but uh, we try to make the players look like the players. I do know for a fact all the players love looking at them and driving their mates, but um, just as an, uh, a quick example of how close we can get to the real thing, um, I'd run the games like a week earlier, so I'm all prepared like you, you know, have to be. And I decided last week or last week or the week before that I'd make Mid Canterbury, South Canterbury my main game of the night. So that was on at five o'clock. And um, so I had that all set and ready to go. And then when I was watching the live stream, the halftime score was 27-5 to South Canterbury. I was talking to a friend. I said, oh, your game's on at five o'clock on the virtual world. And he goes, I hope we play better. And I went, what do you mean? You were leading 27-5 at half time. I went back and checked the final result, and it was 31 all was the final score between Mid Canterbury and South Canterbury in the real world. And I thought, that sounds familiar. So I went back and had a look at the raw uh, virtual coverage I'd done a week earlier. And um, Mid Canterbury, they get a try with a minute to go and take a lead of 24 19 against South Canterbury. And I thought, okay, I thought that score sounded familiar. But then I watched the next one minute, and Mid Canterbury. Um, upset their kickoff and South Canterbury got the ball, ran it into the corner and locked the game up at 24 all and missed the conversion. So we had actually picked the draw a week earlier. And um, so I think that, I, you know, I look at that and think, well, it's not real, but it's as real as we're going to get. Uh, and look, the, the NBA decided to go all virtual with their, uh, with their season before, before having their, um, their, their, their bubble down in Disneyland, um, and there you go. You see, here, here we are in New Zealand, also cutting edge um, technology um, on, on the technology front, doing a virtual season for the Heartland Championship um, as yeah. well, folks. So, um, yeah, so do 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 keep track of that that virtual season or the or, or the E Heart Championship, I guess Heartland Championship is is maybe um, what it's called there. Um, the um, Kevin, thank you for your time, uh, and I say, folks, do check out Rugby Heartland. .co.nz uh, to keep up with all this, but uh, yeah, uh, there is that. That's why you are seeing uh, streams going up, teams getting named from the uh, Heartland Championship provinces. Uh, it's not that the Heartland Championship is happening, but that, that they've decided to arrange their own games um, now that we've had more clarity uh, as to what you can and can't do in COVID. Obviously, back yeah, early, just, we didn't know. I'll just um, uh, quickly go through what games are on this weekend. So we've, uh, as I said, we've got um, Poverty Bay hosting East Coast in Gisborne. Uh, we've got Horafanua hosting um, Mid Canterbury. Uh, sorry, Horafanua. You caught me by surprise then. Uh, <laughs> we've got Horafanua hosting um, Wairarapa Bush in Levin. Unfortunately, no spectators will be allowed. Um, Buller are travelling down to Timaru to play uh, Mid uh, South Canterbury. And Mid Canterbury are playing North Otago. Uh, King Country uh, are having a game against um, Bay of Plenty Academy and Wanganui are still in, uh, they're having their club final so they, they don't start their rep season until um, next week so um, so yeah so I mean there's still plenty to watch and um, when you can get out into level one get out and support these unions they really really need the uh, spectators through the gates when the games are on. Uh, and yes, and, and look, it's like the weather's going to be cracking. We're going to have hard ground. It's going to be cracking rugby. So do get out and support them. Um, Kevin, thank you very much for your time. As I say, folks, don't forget Heartland, um, sorry, rugbyheartland.co.nz and the Heartland Championship NPC um, Facebook page uh, are, are the places to go 
to keep up with all of this. We'll be back on Monday evenings with the normal um, Driving Mall show, um, bringing you your weekly fix of uh, Rugby Union, um, well, action. <laughs>